Hey, welcome back to the Two Car Garage. I'm Lucas, and uh, well, we're in Kurt's Bug here, and we've got the electrical all sorted, and well, now that we're basically done with that, we're going to tear it all back out so we can move on to some other stuff. But as I'm tearing it out, I figured I'd, I'd show you what uh, what's all going on with, with all the stuff you see packed in here. With this car having so many hidden tricks and so much goodness going on, um, we really had to plan and figure out uh, a spot for, for absolutely everything. The car's been completely rewired front to back. I really wanted this to be safe. I wanted it to be reliable and uh, to be easy to service as well. It took a lot of, a lot of effort to get everything to kind of sit uh, in an area where we can get everything covered up and hidden nicely and yet still be, you know, something that's going to be easy to work on in the future should we have to make any upgrades or or repairs. All right, well here's your first glimpse of the trunk when it's mostly all covered up here. You can see we've got the, uh, I got the gas tank in here just to kind of kind of give you more of a complete picture. You see I've got a panel here, we'll be removing that in a minute and show you what's going on underneath there. This here is the cable that runs the, the fuel gauge. That'll hook up to the sending unit when that gets installed. So this is a necessary uh, item that has to be out because it does have to access the tank. But as you can see, uh, almost all of the other wiring is, has been covered up. You can see a couple connectors over here off to the side. Uh, this will eventually be covered once we get carpet and some of the other interior panels in here. Uh, over on the driver's side, you also see some wiring that, that's coming out again necessary to get to where it's going uh, but when I've got my other panels in here that'll all be covered up. The uh, ultimate goal for all this when we get it all done is we will have carpet uh, covering all this. There'll be a panel down here covering the uh, washer bottle so you won't see that. Um, the panel here that covers up all the wiring this will actually be covered in vinyl. Uh, we'll use the same vinyl that we're wrapping the interior with so we've got consistency from inside the car to outside here. But that's kind of kind of the basic layout here. Now, if I remove this panel, set this aside, there's a lot going on here and we'll we'll kind of walk through each each component. But let me remove this panel here so you can see what's going on underneath there. All right, so this panel here is simply to cover this depression that is now housing all of my uh, LED light controls, uh, as well as the harness that runs to the front of the car and all of the air lines for the suspension. You'll see here I've got a couple of, a couple of tabs welded to the body. That is to uh, actually screw this panel down. Made this in such a way that I can use some some flathead screws and those are gonna sit nice and flush so you don't see any lumps in the carpet. And then to make sure everything was strong enough to you know not be buckling or making any noise. On the back side here we've got some uh, just some metal strips that have been welded to the plate. That gave me the thickness I needed for my my screws here as well as it makes it real rigid once everything's assembled. Now you can kind of see what's going on underneath it. So uh, again a lot of stuff kind of packed in here. So this is actually the Bluetooth controller for the LED uh, halo lights. And this allows Kurt to you know, be able to control that from, from his phone. And then right here you'll see these two little modules. Uh, these are actually the drivers for the, for the LED ring. So you need one for, for each ring. And you know, they're now, again, they're going to be hidden and, and well protected so there's not going to be any kind of any kind of chance of damaging these things, but they're also easily accessible uh, should anything go wrong. Because, you know, when you're dealing with aftermarket stuff like this, uh, especially this computer controlled stuff, I'm, I'm always a little bit leery and I want to make sure I can get to it easily should something need to be uh, adjusted or repaired in the future. So that's what's, that's what's going on here. Now, this bundle. Uh, this is what actually controls the whole front half of the car. So we've got all of our light controls. Uh, the horns are in here. Uh, the power for the air compressor is in here. And really everything that runs 
uh, runs off of the front of the car. Now normally on a Volkswagen, you've got your fuse panel which sits right about here that, that's on the inside of the car. Everything plugs into that and then you'd have like wires that would stretch across and then they'll run out of the inner fender wells here to go to the headlights and go to the directionals and all that. And I really didn't want to have any of that to, to have to deal with. I didn't want anything poking through the, through the inner fender. So what we did is we, we just simply completed this recess here, cut down into the, into the body a little bit so it dips down so everything is going to be, going to be well hidden. So you'll also notice down in this recess running next to this bundle of wires are the airlines for the suspension. So I've got a couple of brackets here I'll show you in a, in a couple minutes and they're holding everything nice and neat. It runs out and then what you can't see right now because the gas tank's in the way is it actually pokes out just, just behind the gas tank and then it's able to run down and, and route wherever it's going. So again, everything's tucked away nice and neat. Uh, once the panel's in place you saw that, that it's uh, really well hidden. Well to continue uh, forward here, let me go ahead and just uh, pull the gas tank out and uh, you can get to see everything that's going on uh, under the tank. Alright, so with the gas tank removed, now you can you kind of get an idea of how we've got things going here. So, uh, first things first, here are the airlines for the suspension. So there's one for each corner. Uh, so I've got the left front, right front, and then these are the two rear ones. And then this fifth one is the supply line for the uh, for the paddles. Now you'll notice uh, I've got them routing straight down. Uh, two of them are running into the tunnel. Those will run to the back wheels. And then the two front ones are just clamped down with these Adele clamps to run over to the front airbags. So the little clamps you'll see right here are just something I formed out of, out of some sheet metal. There's a single screw that holds this together. Really just keeps everything nice and neat and uh, well contained and well protected. If I remove this, Again, it's a single screw here. Just pop that out. You can see I've got uh, this little bracket's got a little little standoff braze to it. If I pop this guy off here, you can see I've I've put it together in such a way to help isolate the isolate each each line so we don't have any anything contacting and you know something it's not supposed to. And then it just simply goes into a riv nut in the body. Uh, there's a, uh, an empty spot here. This would have been for a fuel tap, and it's perfect because once you put carpet on the firewall, you won't be able to see what's going on there. So that's, that's the brackets for the airlines here. Now continuing on, you'll notice the, these are the supply lines for the uh, air compressor. So I've got my power coming in, and then that's actually, we're using a weather pack connector for that, so I can, I can disconnect that. And then the, the ground wire actually comes over, probably a little hard to see, and it's going to connect to a ground lug right down here on the, on the chassis. And then the ground wire for the air compressor also runs over to that same lug. So the air compressor will be grounded directly to the chassis and then this larger ground wire is coming up to uh, just be an additional ground to feed my my grounding block. So our air lines, our air compressor lines, uh, air compressor is bolted down here. Uh, right here these are actually the uh, wires that go down to the master cylinder. So we've got our master cylinder wired up. We will be running two switches on this, one for each circuit. That way we pretty much are guaranteed the brake lights are always going to work. To help, again, kind of clean things up, you'll notice right here and right here, I've got some tabs that I welded to the body. So when we put the wiring in for the, for the last time, we'll actually just bend the, bend the tabs over and they're going to help hold this tight to the firewall so nothing, nothing moves around. So we've got a tab here, we've got a tab here. Uh, you'll notice there's a tab here uh, that I originally put in because I thought I was going to mount the compressor differently. And this one will actually end up not being used because we had to move the, move the wiring over just to, just to clear things. 
the wiring for the headlights and for the horns actually runs right along this ridge here. So once it's all tucked away, you can't see it and the gas tank is gonna clear. But again, I've got little tabs that I welded in here that actually support the, the wiring. So I've got a tab here, 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 and here on each side and that holds all that in, in place. And then it gets routed down to, to where it needs to go. You know, we haven't wrapped any of this stuff yet because I want to wait until I'm satisfied that everything's actually done. So we'll, we'll take care of that later. But you can see just how nice, nice and tucked away this is and really uh, keeps everything safe and makes it look clean. You're never going to see this area, but it still looks clean. All right, well, if I bring you up a little bit closer here, you can actually see where the wires are, are popping out here. And, you know, here's, a, here's one of the little tabs that's been welded to it. So once that gets bent up, that's going to hold, hold this harness, you know, up in this little, this little depression here. You know, so the wiring just simply follows around, stays underneath this lip, and then eventually comes down here. And you can see that there's a there's actually a grommet in the in the inner quarter here. So we drilled a hole, and uh, that's where the wiring passes out for the lights. The green wires here that's actually running down to a horn, and then we've got two more horns on the other side of the car that we'll uh, we'll kind of we'll show you how we've got that stuff mounted up. If we move over here, uh, you can see one of the horns that we're going to be using, uh, and then right down below it, you can see the the second horn that we're going to be using. And then the third one, uh, probably going to be a little difficult to see, but right down in there is our, is our third horn. And I'll, I'll walk you through uh, how we're wired all that stuff up here in just a, just a couple minutes. Uh, something else to notice here, you can actually see I do have a, a ground wire that's going to attach right here. Uh, I've got one on the driver's side and the passenger side, but these are not necessarily my primary grounds. They're just connected to my main ground wire which actually runs inside the inside the car up to my my ground distribution block so we should have plenty of of grounds here to kind of take care of everything all right well before we start tearing things down here uh, i figured i might as well at least show you what's going on with the lights so you'll notice that the horn grills have been replaced there was another video i did on that if you want to see what's what's going on there and they are now my parking lights as well as my directionals. So you can see I've got the left one going here. There's my, there's my right one. Um, and then they also will function as the, as the hazards. So that's going to really just kind of clean up the front end of the car and make it look a little better. The headlights uh, are the Morimoto Sealed 7. Uh, it's a really nice LED headlight, really bright, uh, has a nice projection pattern. Um, but then you've got you know your low beams, you've got your high beams, uh, so everything is uh, everything's really functioning pretty well there. Now you'll notice that if I switch back to parking lights, that it is the the lower ambers that are glowing, and it's not the parking lights in the headlight assembly. That is on a separate switch, and um, we actually have. Uh, these red LED bulbs in there. And that is just something that uh, Kurt originally had on the car and, and really kind of liked it. It looks pretty cool. Uh, when you mix the red uh, LED light with the halos, uh, you really can kind of get some, some neat effects. So not really functional, but it's neat. So now we can, we can shut all that off and uh, we can start tearing things apart. Well, one of the things I really tried to incorporate into the car um, was, well, serviceability. Should there ever be a problem and let's say the, the fender gets dinged up and it needs to come off for a repair or something like that, I wanted to be able to remove this stuff without a whole lot of hassle. So what I've done is uh, the wiring harness is actually separated uh, from the headlight and from the uh, directional uh, and I just simply used a Deutsch style uh, weatherproof connector so I'll tell you what let me pull the fender off and uh, I'll bring you up and show you the uh, the wire routing as well as the, the connectors we're using 
All right, so with the fender removed here, you can actually now see the the Deutsch connectors that we're using to, to connect everything up. So we simply have a four wire connector here. This is what plugs into the headlight harness. So I've got you know my high beam, my low beam, my ground, and then the uh, fourth pin is for the well, what's being used is the red LED bulb, the old the old parking light bulb, and then here. I've got a three pin connector, and that's what's connecting into the actual directional, which is, which is on the lower part of the fender. So you see where it pops out of the inner quarter right here. We've got a uh, rubber grommet, but then you'll also notice, if I pull this up and out of the way, I've got a few more metal tabs that have been welded onto here. So that's what's actually going to be holding all of this in place. So, so with all my my wires uh, in place here. Once these tabs again are, are bent over, it's going to hold all of my wiring up and out of harm's way so I don't have any uh, concerns with the tire coming around and, and hitting anything. And it, you know, really tucks everything away neat. Once we actually get the wire harness uh, wrapped and, and finished, you know, this is going to be well protected and uh, honestly, it's going to look, look pretty nice. Now this final connector here, this is actually for the, uh, the headlight halos that we're using. And this, uh, unfortunately, is not a weatherproof connector. So what I've done for this is I've drilled a second hole in my headlight bucket, and this actually pokes through and it will connect inside the headlight housing just to keep this, this connector out of, out of any kind of weather. That was an unfortunate uh, necessity. Um, I could have probably done something uh, to make this work, but we really needed to draw the line somewhere. So this will just come up into the headlight housing and that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna protect that. All right, well, here's the back side of our fender. And you, know, you can see we've got the, the Deutsch connectors here. So here's the, the housing for our, our directional. And then here's the housing for the headlight. And you'll notice that I also have a, a metal tab that's been welded onto the bucket. And that helps hold my harness down up close to the bucket. So again, keeps everything out of harm's way. So here I've just got a piece of, uh, piece of tubing that the wires are run through. Everything's sealed up. You can see I've got a, a grommet here that this fits nice and tight to. And then here is the hole for the halo harness and that's going to pass through there. Again, there's a, a grommet that's going to be on there and that's going to protect that. So that's the, that's the back side of our, our fender. Well, before we go and really start tearing things apart, uh, I'm going to give you a quick tour of what's going on inside the car. Now, the gauges have, have all been uh, connected. Everything's functioning. You see the lights light up. We're not going to go over the gauges. I did a, a whole video just on that. So if you want to if you want to check that out, I'll just link to that, you know, somewhere up here. But uh, moving left to right here, you know, we've got the gauges all connected, all that's working. Um, we're just using a stock uh, directional switch. I do have a new horn wire uh, inserted into the steering column, so that's good to go. Now this car uh, did not originally have any kind of hazard uh, warning lights. We wanted to make sure that that was included just to you know, make things a little safer in case there's ever a, a, a breakdown, a flat tire, anything like that. And so what I've done is I've actually just included that right down here. Um, it's just a toggle switch. So that's making all the lights flash. Um, I've got it hidden behind a little, little stainless steel tab here. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll actually just put a, we'll put a label on there that says hazard. Um, but it's kind of tucked away. You shouldn't really see it once the car's completed but it's there and it's functional. For the headlight switch, we're just using a uh, stock style headlight switch, so it's a new switch. Same thing with the uh, ignition switch, it's just a stock uh, ignition switch. But for the wiper motor, uh, I did go with a newer style. I didn't go with a stock uh, VW switch because I wanted the windshield washers to be electric and I wanted to still activate those from the from the switch here. So what I've done is I just went ahead and picked up uh, a two-speed wiper switch from uh, painless wiring and it has the uh, washer mechanism in it so if I if I turn that on 
you know, I've got my low speed, got my high speed, and then I've got my electric washers running there. Now moving a little further right, um, this is where a lot of the a lot of the hidden goodness is on this car. So first things first, if I turn the ignition on, you'll see this is where we've got the controller for the stereo hidden. Uh, again, I did a video on that, so if you want to check that out, uh, I'll throw a link in the description. But we've got that hidden away, so when the glove box is closed, you're not going to see it. Now, next to the stereo control, um, you're going to see two more switches here. And uh, this, again, helps with some of, the, some of the hidden stuff. First off, what we have here is a selector switch that actually uh, allows Kurt to select which horn he wants to use. And this car actually has three different horns. So we've got a just a stock style, just a standard beep beep horn that you'd, you'd see on any one of these. Uh, in position two, we've got uh, an Awuga style horn. That's the one that Kurt really, uh, really likes. That's the one he had in this car. And then the third switch is an extremely loud um, bad boy horn. So, you know, really... We wanted to give him some options and just kind of make it fun. So if he's doing like a parade or something like that, he can, he can be beeping. Uh, you know, he can, he can have the, the cool klaxon sounding horn. And then just for fun, you know, you got this cute little car and then it's got the, oh my God, this is ridiculously loud. So that's what this, uh, what this chicken head switch is for, is to allow him to choose which, which horn he wants to use. Now this switch here is actually the main power for the halos. And because it's a Bluetooth controller, um, we wanted to have it uh, be able to be used whenever the ignition switch was off. I went and added this extra switch to kill the power to the Bluetooth controller so it's not live all the time and, and potentially draining the battery. So I imagine most of the time he's gonna have this switch off and the only time he'll turn it on is when he wants to you know, use the halos like at a car show or, or something like that. So this is just more of a battery saver switch than anything else. Now, before we put this car together for the last time, I am going to have a plate made that's going to go on here uh, that will indicate what these do. So you're going to have the three indicators for the horn. So you got your, your beep beep, your auga, and your oh my god. And then you've got the... Uh, power switch for, for the halos. So there'll be a nice nice little plate that goes on here to identify all that. Now the last thing that's hidden away in the glove box is actually another switch right over here. Uh, it's probably a little hard to see on camera, but this is actually uh, controls the relay for the air compressor. I wanted to have the ability to shut the air compressor off um, just so when the car goes into storage for a couple of weeks we don't have the potential for uh, the air compressor to turn on. Should this ever develop a leak uh, at one of the connections or, you know, just something, you know, line breaks or whatever, we don't want the air compressor to just be constantly running or, or even just cycling. So I threw this switch in there to be able to shut the compressor off uh, just so we, again, don't have any, any issues. Now, if I bring you down low, You'll notice, you know, we've got the we've got the speakers installed. Again, there was another video on that. We are going to be putting in a shelf here. Uh, it'll be just a bamboo wrapped shelf, so this is nowhere near complete. So you can kind of kind of ignore that for the moment. But if you take a peek right up here, what you're going to see is that in addition to the uh, standard cigarette lighter, uh, I've added another uh, power port here. So this is a 12 volt you know, standard cigarette lighter, so Kurt can plug in an accessory here. And also, right next to it, we've got a USB port as well. So he can plug his phone in here. Uh, he can actually have two different phones plugged in. And if there's any kind of accessory he wants to plug into a standard 12-volt port, uh, he's got that here. So that way he doesn't have to uh, use this one. He can keep that in at all times, you know, like at a show. Uh, but he still has some extra, extra options here. Tucked way under, uh, you know, when you look at it from above, you, you really can't see it. You know, once we got the, the shelf done here, I think it's really going to look, uh, it's going to look pretty slick. Now, back here, uh, 
this looks like a bit of a mess. Well, because it is, we've still got a lot of work that needs to happen here. Um, but just to kind of give you a, a quick rundown of what's going on here. So this is our main power wire. So this runs up to the front of the car and that's what's, what powers the whole car. Now, right now I have it directly connected to the battery, but when we finish this up, there's actually going to be a fuse uh, right here. So we're going to have a maxi fuse that will be probably a, like a 75 amp fuse. And that should help kind of protect, protect the car. Right, so if we ever have a short in this wire or anything like that, hopefully that will blow, not cause any other issues. The uh, main power wire that runs from the battery to the starter, um, that is not installed yet. That's just going to come up here and connect, connect there, so that'll happen at a later date. But then I've got a couple other things going on here. So this is our, this is our starter wire that runs from the ignition switch. And we're not going to run that directly to the starter. This will actually come and connect to a relay, which will be mounted right here. And that's just going to help take the stress off of the uh, ignition switch, as well as, uh, you know, we're not running power all the way from the back of the car to the front, and then from the front all the way back to the starter. It's just gonna allow us to run uh, battery voltage directly to the, to the starter itself. So that's why this hasn't been hooked up yet. And then the rest of this stuff is all for the, for the stereo. So this is what controls our, our Bluetooth amp. This runs up to the subwoofer. And then we've got some, some grounds and stuff over here. So this is a mess right now. And honestly, it's as far as we're going to go for the moment because I want to get some other things taken care of here before I, I finish this up. And because this is all tucked away underneath here, we're not really having to customize anything. So I don't need to finish this now. So that'll... That'll happen, you know, at a later date. All right, well now we can take a look at the heart of the whole system here. Well, that's everything that's gonna be behind this beauty panel. And one of the things I tried to do here, uh, wherever possible, was to include connectors. So all of the uh, independent items can be removed uh, without disrupting the whole system. So we'll just start over here uh, with the glove box. And actually what we've got here is a uh, an aftermarket glove box that has the recess in it to accept a, uh, a radio, a stereo head unit. And I went ahead and utilized that to do a couple things. One was for the, uh, well, the radio controls, but also those extra switches we showed you inside. But I also had a bunch of extra space here to allow me to put the units here, like these are for the uh, power windows, and then I've got the door lock units back here. All of that is now contained and attached directly to that. But you'll notice that I've got connectors on all of this stuff and everything's been color coded so there's really only one way to hook things up. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and get all this stuff unplugged here. I'll go ahead and remove the glove box. All right, so now that I've got the, the box removed here, we can see all the all the components involved here. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and take this over to a bench and then uh, I'll pull these components off and you can kind of kind of see what we had to do in order to get everything to, to fit the way I wanted it to. Uh, now what I've done is I've gone ahead and taken the Bluetooth controller out just because the cables attached to that. It was just kind of, a, kind of a hassle to deal with. But you can now see if you look in here, there's a little little mount for the controller that's just snaps into the plastic, so we just had to cut a hole for that. And then uh, again, our, our couple little switches in here. On the back side, this is the, the interesting part. Again, we've got all this stuff that's been, been piled in here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull some of this stuff off just so you can kind of see how I, how I got all this stuff to work together. So here, these are the power window controllers. So this has one touch down and up power windows, and this is, uh, this is what activates that. So I've just simply gone and stacked the two uh, belly to belly here. Took a couple of pieces of nylon and uh, this hard plastic here and made a couple little standoffs so that'll hold that together. And then that is just simply screwed into 
a couple of rib nuts in this little little plastic base. And I'm going to take a few more of these components off so we can actually see all the work that I did to this. So just give me a second. All right, well here is actually the uh, module for the for the remote. And so this has now been wired into this harness which plugs into the uh, power lock unit and then it's got a couple other plugs that will plug into the power window unit. And so this is kind of a self-contained deal. Now right now you can see I just have some some uh, blue tape I was holding this together. When I put this together for the last time I'll use some double-sided foam tape to stick that in place so it's not going to go anywhere. And then here I'm going to go ahead and pop this guy off. What I've done is I just have the module screwed into this little project box. And so again, I got a couple little, little rib nuts in this box here. But now I'm going to go ahead and pull this cover off so you can actually see uh, what we're doing to control the, the horns and stuff. So right here, we have a project box, just a little plastic box. You can pick them up on Amazon. And that is used to house the switch for the horn selector. And what this actually is, is a uh, selector switch out of a guitar. So you can select which, which pickups you're using. And because we're just controlling uh, grounds to relays, we're not actually running a lot of power through it. This is more than acceptable for what we're trying to achieve. But you can see I've got the selector switch in here and I, I used the project box just to contain it, just to keep dirt and dust off of it. Uh, you can see just from the time I've been working on the car just how, how dirty things have gotten. And that's uh, you know the primary reason I wanted to encase the switch in a box. And then right next to it is the switch for the LED lights. We wanted again, keep that contained. So I've got the wires running through a couple of grommets. You'll notice here I've got this mesh sleeving and I've used that extensively throughout this, this uh, project here just to keep things looking nice and, and contained. Now, a couple things to note with the box here. Um, because I've got all this extra stuff piled in the back, it was actually encroaching on the little beauty panel that kind of covers everything up. And so what I've done is I actually trimmed the box a little bit shorter. I cut about an inch off of it just to tuck it up a little bit closer to the dashboard. And then that ensured that none of my electrics would, would actually run into that panel and hit that. Now, in doing so, the strap that holds it on there ends up being too long. And I, I thought about modifying that, but instead of going that route, what I've done is I just took some other ABS plastic. I just bought a sheet of ABS plastic and uh, bent that up, actually glued it to the box using... Uh, well, ABS plumbing glue, because it's a, it's a cement that actually melts the plastic together. And then now my strap will come around this little, this little tail that sticks off, and that's what's going to hold it nice and tight. Uh, you'll also notice right here, there's a bit of a hollow gap right there. Uh, I built a little platform to raise up these two pieces that are bolted on there. Uh, and that was just so I could put these little rib nuts in there, and I'd have space for that. I didn't want anything encroaching the inside of the box. So you'll notice other than the switches, there's no, there's no visible uh, screws or anything like that holding all this junk on there, just the screws holding this, this job box on there. And then these screws will uh, eventually be replaced with some, uh, some recessed flat screws that will uh, fit the little beauty panel we're going to have made that's going to identify all this stuff. So that's, that's the basics of the, of the layout for the uh, for the glove box electronics. All right, well back inside the car here, I've already started taking a few things off, uh, but the first thing we'll, we'll look at here are actually the Halo controllers. So this guy right here, this is a, a Morimoto Bluetooth um, controller. So your phone connects to this, and then this has all these plugs to plug into the actual drivers for the LEDs. And uh, right now, We've got our power that comes in on this plug here, and then this one here, there's the left and the right controls for the, uh, for the halos themselves. But we still have these four connectors here, should we wish to, you know, add some other LED elements in the future, you know, some strip lights or whatever. So, you know, pretty, uh, pretty neat little unit. 
This guy right here, uh, this is just an aluminum plate. The, uh, the drivers for the LEDs are actually just held on with some double-sided tape. And uh, if I move that off to the side, what you'll notice here is uh, I've got these, all these aluminum standoffs here. And that's what actually is holding all these components in place. So I just machined these out of some 3 8 inch aluminum. Uh, it's drilled and tapped, so there's some screws that hold it from the underside, from inside the car. And then a couple of screws that hold the, the items in from the top. This one here, you'll notice, doesn't have any, any hole in it. That is actually because the Bluetooth uh, receiver only has two mounting screws on one end. And so this one is actually just to support it. What we'll do is we're going to put a piece of foam tape on the, on the controller itself so it won't rattle. And uh, it should be, held, should be held fast. Here you can see all my individual Molex connectors that plug into each one of the, one of the units. These are all just power wires. And uh, again, trying to make everything as plug and play as possible. Now, before we keep going on, on the electrical stuff here, uh, I just wanted to quick touch on the, on the airline routing. So what I've done here, if I can go ahead and pop this guy off. So this is just half inch aluminum. I went ahead and milled some slots in there. Uh, so the four airbag lines and then my one feed line. You'll notice that there's a couple of riv nuts in the body. Now they do go into the passenger compartment, but I put them up on this, this little raised ridge, this support ridge here, and so they don't actually extend down into the passenger compartment, so you can't see them from inside. And uh, the other nice thing about having them routed here is this is rounded, so I'm not worried about the, the lines you know, rubbing through or anything like that. Uh, these are not completely finished yet. I am going to come through and do some some final deburring and just soften all the edges. But you at least get the idea what's going on here. You know, you slide this in place. Once it's screwed down, uh, you know, everything's nice and organized and also really, really solid. So from here, it continues down into this little recess that I cut into the, into the trunk pan here. And then my, again, my lines just simply route outside. Uh, they do go through. Uh, some grommets. When I put this together for the last time, I'll put a little bit of uh, butyl sealer on there as well, just to make sure everything stays, you know, stays watertight, so we don't have any intrusion there. And uh, really, it ends up being a pretty, pretty clean setup here. You can't see the rest of the routing just yet. We'll get there once we start pulling more, more pieces off. And uh, well, let's start pulling some more pieces off. All right, so moving up from our controllers, um, if I move up here, we've got our fuse block and relay block. Uh, we'll pull that out in just a second. Uh, moving over to the driver side here, uh, you'll notice that I've got a bunch of connectors here. So if I disconnect this one, this guy here uh, actually is what controls my engine. So I've got my start wire, my coil wire, my oil pressure and alternator wire. You know, so that's all in here. I've got another flat connector here. This is actually for all the rear lights. And then we've got a connector here. This is actually for the uh, amplifier. And then there's one more wire that routes down and that goes to the high low beam switch. Now right here, if I pull this little nut off here in this guide, you'll see that this is actually my, my primary power wire from the battery. So I brought that into a junction block that does have a protective cover for it. And that allows me to isolate this from the fuse block. I wanted to make sure that I could take this harness out, take this harness out, not have everything be connected to the rear of the car so I can put it together in, in pieces. So if I just pull these guys off, and so now, again, here's my main feed wire, and it is isolated. So here's the harness that goes to the rear of the car, completely separate now from the, from the rest of the block. Uh, the whole reason, again, for that is to make things modular so I can have different segments in and out. If we ever have to take this out, I don't want to have to, you know, be fighting with all this that goes to the rear. So I got a couple of plugs back here. 
here I've got my, this is the wire harness that goes up to the dome light. So again, it's isolated now, so I don't have to worry about that being in the way. And I got one that goes down to the door light switch. We can disconnect that. And then down here, let me just get these unplugged. Here I've got the wires that run down to the uh, air tank. So one goes to the air tank here, and this is actually just goes to the switch. This is what tells the compressor to turn on and off. And then this guy here uh, actually goes to the windshield washer uh, pump. Now the last bit of wiring here is actually this guy right here. This is what runs down to my high low switch. And so that takes care of that takes care of that. Uh, right here, I've got the plug for the directional switch. So again, separates separates it now from the steering column, so I don't have to worry about that. And now, for the most part, other than uh, some gauge stuff here, this this fuse block is is now isolated. All right. So moving over here, uh, you'll notice there's a this black box right here. Uh, if I just unplug that, it's just a little three wire connection. Uh, this is actually uh, a headlight warning buzzer. Uh, I got this from Scott Drake. Um, you'll see this in a lot of a lot of Mustangs. Uh, it's actually the Mustang suppliers are the ones who sell this. So basically, what happens here is if you leave the uh, headlights on but turn the ignition switch off, as soon as you open the door, you're going to get a warning buzzer. Just one of those niceties, so Kirk doesn't accidentally leave his headlights on sometime when he parks. And, uh, you know, nobody likes coming out to a, to a dead battery. I will throw a link in the description to where I got this from, as well as a lot of the other stuff that we're, we're talking about here. Uh, this is the uh, speaker wire for the left front speaker. This will be routed differently when I actually put this together. So right now it's just kind of laying here. Next thing to take a peek at here, this is my ground distribution block. Uh, what I've done here is every, every relay in this box and most of the accessories all get routed to this block right here. I wanted to make sure that this thing is well, well grounded. We don't want to have any, any issues with that. Um, and I've got it grounded to the body here. So I have a bolt and I'm actually going to have a stud welded in here. So we can just use a nut to attach this. But then we mentioned earlier, there's another ground wire that comes out that goes out to the chassis. Uh, and I think that's really going to make sure we don't have any, any issues with, uh, with grounding here. So now I can go ahead and remove these screws here. So this is what's holding my fuse block down. And what I've got going on here, because these are, the holes in this panel are really, really deep. They come all the way down to here. So I actually just took some, some nylon uh, rod that I had here, machined that to be the right length, got some extra long bolts. That now will extend all the way through into my mounting tab, uh, but still keep the, the heads up on top so I can access them. Right now I only have the front two, uh, but there are two more in the back as well. So I can pop these guys out of there. And now we can go ahead and pull the fuse block forward. Now it's still attached to the wiper switch. It's still attached to the ignition and the headlight switch. So all of that needs to be disconnected before this will actually come all the way out. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of that stuff unplugged. And then uh, I'll go ahead and disconnect the whole harness uh, from the headlights and the horns and we're going to pull this whole thing out. I'll get it to a bench and we can, well, we can kind of look at this up close. So with the harness removed, uh, you kind of get a better sense of what's going on with all the airlines here. Um, first things first, we already looked at the little brackets I made here that kind of separate out the, uh, the exit of the lines here and you can see where they route up under where the fuse box is going to be. A couple of things I've done here to keep everything nice and neat. Um, I do have a bracket welded to the body right here and there's just simply a little 
little tab that holds this in place. It's got a screw that holds it on there. So that keeps the lines all nice and tight up next to each other. Now, running uh, in front of this, this uh, steering column brace, I did have an issue with the, the lines being springy and wanting to pop up out of the way. So I removed the bolts here so I can pop this guy off. And you can see what I've done here is I've just simply welded, uh, just welded a piece of steel to the bracket here. And that is to help keep these lines held down so they're not springing up and putting any stress on the, on the, the mess that's going on over here. Now, this line right here you see cut off, uh, that is actually the feed line that'll hook up here eventually. The only reason it's not connected now is I needed to uh, draw it back. It was cut too short on the other end, so I just disconnected it here to pull it back so I could hook up the uh, air tank. So, with this guy out of the way here, uh, we can kind of kind of see more what's going on. Now what I'm going to do here first is I'm just going to I'm going to pop the speedometer out and uh, I already did a video on on making the gauges here and kind of showed what's going on with the with the wiring. So you can you can scope that out if you're uh, curious to see what's going on with all these connectors. All right, with the speedometer out, uh, really all that's left over here now is the cluster for the uh, air ride. And I, there's a lot going on here, and when I put the car together for the last time, I'm going to see if I can clean this up a little bit, but unfortunately, because of the way I've got everything put together, this, this, kind, of, this is kind of appearing to be the best I can do. Um, what we have is the, uh, the gauges are you know, up in the dash on the left-hand side of the dash, but the air valves are directly below that. Um, so they're on the underside of the dash, so you can't you can't really see them when the car uh, is on the ground. And we put them there on purpose, just so it's easy access. You can reach them from the uh, driver's door window and all that. But because the valves come up directly under the gauges, this this nightmare of, of fittings really really kind of ended up being necessary. All right, the last couple things to look at here, uh, and that probably will be about all the major stuff that was done. Uh, you'll notice right here I've got this plate and this plate is to cover up the hole for the original fuse block. So if I pull that out, you know, this is where the original fuse block went. And I thought about just welding this shut, but I figured uh, just, just for grins I would not do that and I would just build a plate here. And so you'll see what it is is we've actually got a couple little little tabs that have been bent into it. We just cut a couple notches, bent it around, and so they just hook on the hook on the top side of this hole here, and then the two screws uh, that actually hold on the grounding block are what actually cinch this down. So we'll end up just cleaning this. We'll slap some paint on it to match the rest of that we do. And when I do put this together uh, for the last time, I am gonna put some, some really thin foam on here just to uh, really keep it from rattling. So moving over to the left, you can actually see my brackets for the uh, fuse block. And uh, basically all I've done here is in the back there's a couple of little little tabs that have been welded to the dashboard and then this big bracket will screw to that tab and then it also screws in from, from underneath the dash. So these are removable um, if needed. Uh, I figured it'd be best to not have this permanently welded in just in case we needed to access anything in here. Now one thing I, I did find that when I had the fuse block mounted it sits right over the uh, ashtray and you can see here uh, I actually have this this piece of plastic here. Uh, it's just a piece of ABS. What I've done is I just you know I just folded it around. Uh, it's, I've got it glued together and then what we'll do is we will uh, use some double-sided tape to stick this on there and it's just because this comes up into the fuse block and I just didn't want there to be any chance of any kind of uh, electrical contact so really just just an insulator probably wasn't necessary because it wasn't near any of the other blocks but I figured it's better uh, better to play it safe all right well now we can look at the well the heart of the system here and that is this combination uh, fuse panel and relay block 
And we went with this because it really does a nice job of containing everything in a, a fairly small package. You know, you really couldn't get much smaller than this with all the, the different components we're running. So again, we've got our fuses down here and uh, then I've got all these relays to, really, that's what controls the car. Um, part of the issue that I'm trying to overcome is really just the, uh, the original Volkswagen wiring. Again, you know, it worked, but it was kind of sketchy. But uh, a bigger problem I saw was the replacement parts that are available, uh, mainly like the uh, ignition switch and the headlight switch. I've just heard uh, reports that they just don't last that long. They're just not the same as, well, they're not the same as original. And so what I've decided to do here is I run everything through a relay. So really there's very little power uh, going through the headlight switch or going through the ignition switch. There's just enough to activate one of the relays. Um, that way the, well, hopefully the switches don't burn up. Uh, that's what I've heard happens most often is like that's the ignition switch, the starting circuit will burn up, uh, just the contacts aren't very good. Um, now it's not going to stop the switch from actually breaking, but you know, hopefully stops the, the burning up issue. Same thing with the headlight switch. I've, I've read that uh, people have had problems with the headlight switches failing and uh, I'm just stabbing in the dark here. My guess is that the, the switches are actually just burning up, the contacts just burn up. So what we've done here to isolate all that is I've got one switch that will actually run the ignition. Uh, so this is what is controlling power uh, that runs the car, like the engine, uh, the coil, uh, all the power to the uh, gauges and all that. So that runs off of uh, this relay. And then I've got three relays actually for the horn, because remember we've got the three different horns and each one of those had to have its own relay. Uh, then there's a, this relay here will run the air compressor, you know, so that's, uh, again, the switch on the air tank, all it does is activate the relay, that turns the compressor on. There's a relay just for the radio, uh, I wanted to make sure that I'm not, you know, sharing this relay that's running the car, so if one of them fails, um, you know, we're not killing the whole thing. And then finally I've got uh, two relays, uh, one for each headlight, uh, high or low. So that way, if uh, again, if one of the relays fails, you still have the other side that you can that you can use. So again, the ignition switch activates this relay and this relay. The headlight switch activates these two relays and just isolates just isolates everything um, and uses again these 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 heavy duty relays. Now, um, I did buy a package of relays. Uh, it was really inexpensive. I think I'm only going to call these test relays and we will end up replacing these with a, with a higher end Bosch unit before the, the car gets put on the road. Um, these are probably fine, but you know, as cheap as they were, I'd, I'd rather have a, a much higher quality. Now, next to the relays here, you're going to see uh, actually my flashers. Uh, one flasher for the directional, and then one flasher is for the hazards. These are LED uh, compatible flashers. I didn't want to be running resistors in the line like you, most people will do when they convert to LED bulbs. Uh, I wanted something that it, down the road, if, the, if a bulb fails and it just gets replaced with a standard bulb, everything's going to work. So these are electronic flashers, but you'll notice here the wires coming off. Um, you need this because the flashing unit actually needs to be grounded. So right here, there's a couple of a couple of screws. These are the grounds for the box, so I'm able to just attach those right there. And then the fuse layout is just a, a blade style fuse, real common. You can get them anywhere. No more of the weird uh, Volkswagen style fuses. And uh, eventually, I will have again a, a beauty plate that's going to go on here. That's going to have every one labeled. Uh, instead of just this blue tape that we're using for the time being. All right, well, if we flip this box over, uh, you're going to see a whole whole spaghetti of, of wiring here. And uh, I have honestly, I, I, I routed this stuff as well as clean as I could, but getting everywhere, um, this is what it ends up looking like. Now, we have uh, the main power wire uh, from the battery comes in and that actually activates this rail right here. And then all of the power uh, 
for the fuses comes off of this rail. So again, main power comes in. That will be a fused line in the back by the battery. And then from here, um, there's the wires that come out to each one of the individual fuses. And then from there, it's, the wires run out to the whatever relay it needs to go to. Um, you'll notice there's another block over here. Uh, this one uh, is the ignition block. So this rail over here is always live, connected directly to the battery. This one here only is live when the ignition switch is on. So this is what then comes, the power comes out of here and powers the other uh, fuses that need to be turned on and off. And then finally right here we've got a, a ground bus. And so all of the grounds for the relays uh, will come in and they'll, they'll attach right here. So essentially you've got the switches will run through the uh, relay and then they needs to be grounded on the other side. That's what this grounding block is for. And then you'll see we've got a heavy duty uh, ground wire that actually runs out to the uh, to the main ground bus. So that's that's how this whole setup works here. Now we talked about having these two ground screws here um, because this is the uh, attachment point for the grounding bus. But then I also have some live ones over here. So like these two little these two little brass uh, threaded holes right here are the live ones. So if I ever need to get live power to run another accessory that gets added, uh, I can actually just tap right off of this. And then this one over here will be a, a switched power. So again, if I needed to draw for another circuit for another accessory of some sort that needs to be on the switch, we would draw it from right there. So really, it, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a nice unit. It gives us a lot of options for, for what we want to do in the future. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about before we move on to anything else here. I mentioned that I, I added a hazard uh, light switch to this car. It didn't have it before. Um, and because I reworked the uh, speedometer lights, you know, so I've got the left and the right uh, signal plus the uh, red double arrow that will flash with the hazards, I needed all of those to be isolated. What I've done here, what you'll see, um, I picked up this switch. I didn't want anything, you know, real fancy. So what this switch is, is a three-pole single-throw switch, meaning it, it basically has three separate circuits that run through it, but it's just an on-off switch. So what I've done is I've wired it up. I know it's a little hard to see this. So what you'll see here is there's one power wire that comes in. It gets split to power up the three independent circuits. The other side then has three wires coming out. So one is dedicated to the light in the speedometer to make that double arrow flash. And then there's one that goes to the left uh, signal and one to the right signal. So that way, again, I don't have anything back feeding and any crossover. Now, for the connectors that were used to put all this stuff together, um, I've used mainly uh, Molex connectors. Um, I'll throw links to all this stuff in the, in the description, but for the speedometer here, I actually have these little uh, micro Molex connectors. Um, there's not a lot of power going through them, so I didn't need anything heavy duty. So we've got the small connectors here. For things like the directionals and the taillights, uh, I've got these flat, uh, larger gauge connectors. So these, these will definitely handle the power that's going out. In case you're curious, uh, one common place for these Molex connectors is inside of a desktop PC. This is usually what will hook the power supply up to like the motherboard. So that's, that's these little Molex connectors. Uh, this guy here that actually runs the uh, motor, so I've got the starter wire, the coil wire, um, alternator, stuff like that. Um, I wanted something a little heavier duty than, than just a Molex. Uh, so this is just a, uh, it's a Delphi connector. It's uh, commonly referred to as like a Packard or Packard 56 connector. Oftentimes found in, in older uh, American vehicles. Uh, GM used a lot of them. So this one's just a little bit heavier duty, uh, just because I want to make sure we didn't have any failures here. Uh, but it also helps, again, use a different connector for each, each item. Over here, all the items that plug into like the, the accessories that are mounted to the glove box, again, using a variety of different Molex connectors, different sizes, um, 
I've used, you know, you can see I've got one black one here, I got a white one here. Again, I kind of tried to make sure everything was unique to the point where you couldn't accidentally plug something into the wrong, to the wrong spot. Then on top of that, you can see like I've got a piece of green shrink tube on this, I've got some yellow shrink tube on this. Over here for the speedometer, you can see I've got green, red, and blue. It's really, it, it's really pretty much dummy proofed. Now I am reusing connectors. You know, there's a lot of different areas that I, you know, like this four pin connector I've used a, in a couple places, but they're all isolated. They're far enough apart that it's, it's okay that they're shared. You really can't get it wrong. And so we know when we put this together, uh, it's gonna get put together right. Now I had mentioned that uh, we're using an aftermarket uh, wiper switch. And uh, I just picked it up again from uh, Painless Performance. It's a really, uh, really nice, heavy-duty switch. I, I think it's going to last. It's going to last the life of this car. But there was an issue with this, and that was in the actual mounting of it. The original mounting for the Volkswagen switches in the dash uses this little, uh, well, they call it a, a mounting screw. Um, pretty neat piece. It's just aluminum. It's got a slot cut in it, and that usually would thread into the switch. But the aftermarket switch here is just like a standard pot type switch and it has a, a nut on it. So you put this through the hole in the dash, run the nut on there, basically like most modern switches you'll see. I wanted to retain the look of the original thing. So what I've done here is I actually just made a little, little aluminum sleeve um, that is machined to fit the back of the dash. So you'll notice there's a little little notch in here. That's an indexing notch, just like the original switch had. Um, and there's a little tab on the dash that keeps it from, from rotating. So I made this little sleeve. Uh, it's been drilled and tapped to the same thread as what's on the switch here. So now when I take and thread this little barrel on here, I now have a female thread to run a screw into. Now, this is an American thread pitch, it's not metric, and so I actually made this little uh, screw. So this mimics the original one, only it has the American thread on it. It's a 7 16 thread of some sort. Um, and so again, I just machined that up, chucked it in the mill, cut the slot in there so it looks like the original. So once everything's put together, uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't know that we used an aftermarket part. Now one issue I did run into, because this little barrel extends this out, the, uh, the actual knob uh, mounting point was too short. It couldn't get the knob on there. So again, what I did here is I just machined up an extension for it. So this is just a piece of brass. It's been uh, drilled to slide over the original post. I machined the end of it here so it's the same size as the, the original part. And then to mount it in here, uh, I just simply drilled a hole in it, uh, in the brass and in the stem, and just drove in a pin. So this is nice and tight, it's not gonna go anywhere. And uh, once, I get my, once I get my nut on here, it extends this out far enough that I can still put my Put my knob on there because we've got the little flat on here i can just use a knob that has a set screw and so i actually bought uh knobs i think they're radio knobs that uh already have the set screw in them so all i gotta do is slide the knob on there tighten up the nut good to go uh, all in all once it's together you'll never know well there we are there's the electrical system that's going in the kurtz bug and i know there's a lot to go over there's a lot of stuff that i, I know i've skipped um if at some point I get enough comments on something you want to see up close, we can, we can do little short videos on that stuff. But, you know, with everything laid out here, there's a, there's a lot of different components, but I think it's going to make the car just that much better. I'm more than happy with how safe things are going to be with the fuse block, um, isolating all the different circuits with the relays uh, controlling everything. I know that we're not going to have any any hazard issues. There's still a lot of little things that need to be completed. You know, for instance, this is the wire that goes to the passenger side uh, door switch. I don't have that connected right now because, well, I didn't put the switch in. This doesn't need to be hooked up right now. I can terminate this at a later date. 
But that's the kind of stuff that still needs to be done. You know, I don't have the fuse situation figured out in the back of the car yet. I don't have a relay for the starter. All of that will just happen um, as we get a little bit further along. For now, at least we've got the majority of the hard stuff out of the way. Everything's routed correctly. We've got all the different tabs welded into the body. I do have uh, two more tabs I need to weld in under the trunk, but I didn't want to do that with all the wiring in place. So now that all this is taken out, we can go ahead and finish up the last, last little welding details. But with all of this taken care of, and we know that everything's working together, I'm going to take all this stuff, I'm going to box it up, uh, take the stereo out, get that all boxed up, put everything on a shelf, and then, uh, well, then we can move on to some more of the, the messy stuff. But I think, uh, I think for today, we're going to cut it off right here. So if you got questions, if there's something that you didn't see and you want to see up close, uh, leave a message in the comments, and I'll see if I can dig these components back out and show you up close. Anyway, thanks for hanging out and... Uh, you know, watching what's going on here. And until the next one, I'll see you around.